begin this morning with breaking news. Federal agents just finished a raid on two homes in Murfreesboro. We're told a number of law enforcement officers responded at two separate locations, one on Spalding Circle, the other on Pecan Ridge Drive around 7 a.m. The FBI, Rutherford County Sheriff's deputies and Murfreesboro police were all there. No one was arrested and we're still waiting to confirm exactly what this raid was all about. A motions hearing just wrapped up for the first Holly Bobo murder case in Harding County. The defense asked for a delay until January, but the judge denied that motion and insists the trial is still going to start September 11th. There were a few heated exchanges over evidence this morning, and for the first time we learned how prosecutors believe Bobo died. They have experts who say an indentation found in Holly's skull indicates a bullet went through her head. At least 200 witnesses have been subpoenaed by the state. Zach Adams and two others are charged in Bobo's kidnapping, rape and murder six years ago. And this morning we remember the life and legacy of the rhinestone cowboy Glenn Campbell. He lost his very public battle against Alzheimer's disease yesterday at the age of 81. Anthony Mason shows us why he was such a beloved icon and how his legacy goes beyond music. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be anywhere. <laughs> Glenn Campbell was country music's first crossover star. Just knowing that your door is always open. It's a good song. I like a good song, you know. You never thought of yourself as a country singer? No. One of 12 children of an Arkansas sharecropper, Glenn first picked up a guitar at age four. He was a natural. By the early 60s, he'd played his way to L.A., though he couldn't read music. Campbell quickly became one of the most sought-after guitarists in the city. You started getting a lot of session work. Yeah, it was great, man. I bought a car. <laughs> <laughs> one of an elite group of studio musicians known as the Wrecking Crew. In 1963 alone, Campbell performed on nearly 600 cuts for other artists. Wouldn't it be nice if we and when Brian Wilson took time off from the Beach Boys, Campbell filled in for six months, as he told me in an interview for CBS Sunday Morning in 2012. I had to go with him on a gig and play bass and sing his part. <laughs> it was like, it's a little old lady from Pasadena. In 1967, his solo career took off on a Jimmy Webb song. By the time I get to Phoenix. He'd win four Grammys that year, and the next year the Smothers Brothers asked him to host their summer replacement show on CBS. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Glenn Campbell. Kind of everything changed after that, didn't it? Yeah, it did. I didn't realize the power of television. The Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour ran for four years and made him a household name. I've been walking the streets so long. But Campbell's biggest hit was still to come. In 1975, he heard a demo that he thought could be his signature tune. I've been walking these streets so long, singing the same old song. That was just perfect. Like a rhinestone cowboy. In 2012, a year after he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, Campbell embarked on a farewell tour. Galveston, Galveston. The Rhinestone Cowboys. Last ride. Anthony Mason, CBS News, New York. Well, in lieu of flowers, the family asks for donations to the Glenn Campbell Memorial Fund at the Bright Focus Foundation. We put a link to that on our website, newschannel5.com. After construction pushed back the first day of school, students at John Overton High School are finally back in class this morning. The work ran behind schedule this summer, forcing the school to push that first day till today. This morning, students lined up to go inside the new building. I'm sure very excited while heavy machinery still sat outside. The $40 million overhaul will upgrade most rooms on campus until it's finished. Some students and teachers will have to share space inside the school. And a total about face from Metro schools. Students will not go to class the day of the coast to coast solar eclipse. The school system said last night while it had been planning eclipse based lesson plans, it became apparent there are many challenges related to transportation, staffing and attendance, all of which could impact student safety. 
Join us on News Channel 5 for everything Eclipse on Monday, August 21st. We're going to have special coverage here on Talk of the Town as the eclipse heads our way, plus a spectacular view of the total solar eclipse as it happens. News Channel 5 presents Coast to Coast Eclipse airs at 1 o'clock August 21st.